Hello. In this video, I'd like to show you a few more things about 3ds Max 2015 and then show you how you can use Open Subdiv. So, let's say that I create a plane. Now, remember, remember if you watched my previous videos that we have every polygon has a front face and a back face. However, in previous versions, the back face was black and now it's the same color, it's green. So we can't really see the difference between a front face and a black face. Well, what we can do, we can go under, click the plus, configure viewports, and then visual style and appearance. And here we actually have, we can illuminate with one light or two lights. Now by default it used to be one light, but now it's two lights. But you can switch it back to one. And if you click on OK, you notice that the back face is now black so we can easily see it. So I prefer to see this. Some people like to go to, for example, object properties and then back face cull, which will pretty much make the back face invisible, but this I find this a little bit a little bit distracting. So I like to actually see it, so I like to keep back face cull off and have just a black back face. Now if you notice that when you open up 3ds Max that everything looks a little bit pale, a little bit too bright, it may be because you need to go under rendering and then gamma LUT setup. Now by default gamma correction will be on and gamma set to 2.2. Now if you want ultra realistic rendering you may want to keep this on but you can see that it makes everything a lot paler. So notice the difference in the color and notice how these colors here look. Now when I'm modeling I actually like the colors to be a little bit darker Although proper gamma of 2.2 can be very helpful for achieving photorealistic renders, when you're modeling you may just want the colors to be darker. So you can go here in the rendering, gamma LUT setup and simply remove the checkbox here. And now notice the colors are back to being darker. And there are other ways to have proper gamma aside from going in there and setting it there. You can use the render settings. Alright, next you want to disable the keyboard shortcut override toggle because it can make a lot of the hotkeys and shortcuts not work. So you want to make sure that's off. And in the previous video I told you that if you hover over something and then scroll wheel, use a scroll wheel, it will zoom in on that location. But you can see it's not doing that now. I decided to turn it off because I found it very distracting and hard to maneuver around my scene. So I actually prefer just to zoom in on the center of my selected object and not where my cursor is. So to disable that you can go under customize, customize user interface and on the right we have mouse. So the two options that were enabled by default is zoom about mouse point orthographic and zoom about mouse point perspective. So I simply took off the checks here. I also took off the check at autofocus viewport, so pretty much disabled all of this, and I find this to be a lot more comfortable. If you like the previous setup, you can just activate those options, and that way, when you scroll wheel, use a scroll wheel on your mouse, it will zoom in on your where your cursor is. All right, so I'll make this gray, and let's get started with Open Subdiv. So, what exactly is Open Subdiv? It's a subdivision algorithm developed by Pixar and it's meant to address a few problems that subdivision normally has. For one, let's say I create a cylinder here. And I will center it here. And I just give it eight sides and just decrease its radius. All right. And then I will delete the end gun on the top and bottom like so. And if I apply turbo smooth, for example, you can see what kind of result we get. So now I will turn Turbo Smooth off and export this as an OBJ and I'll open this up in ZBrush. And here I am in ZBrush. Here's the same cylinder. I now click on Divide, which will subdivide the mesh. So notice what happens. The mesh is still subdivided. However, it's subdivided in a different way. So, every program has its own method for subdivision. And although sometimes it may look similar, it's actually using different algorithms. So, a cylinder in ZBrush will look different than a cylinder in 3ds Max once subdivided. 
Now open subdiv is open source, which means that anyone can download it, anyone can download the code and implement it into any program, which means any program with open subdiv, the meshes will look the same. You can import and export and the subdivision will make it look the same and also the textures will be applied the same. So it means that it's a lot easier to share models and textures between programs. Open subdiv also makes textures look a lot better. It makes them fit on the, the geometry a lot better once it's subdivided. If you use something like Turbo Smooth, sometimes you'll get stretching and distortion in various areas and the texture will kind of be distorted. With open subdiv, that is greatly reduced. And lastly, it makes adding detail and working with edge loops and topology a lot easier, faster, simpler. So I'm actually using a plugin for Open Subdiv, one that's made by a company called Magic Picture Studios. And you'll find a link to that plugin in the description to this video. Simply put that in your plugins folder, your 3ds Max, and then plugins. Well, first I'll show you the old subdivision method, in case you're not familiar with it. Let me just set the length segments to 1 and width segments to 1 as well. And I will apply Edit Poly and begin doing some basic modeling here. So I will extrude this up and extrude this right here and simply delete that. Okay, so if you apply Turbo Smooth, you will get pretty much this result right here. And you can sharpen this up by inserting one or two or more loops through here and I notice that it's nice and sharp. So in this case the simply adding loops works just fine but let's say you have something a little bit more complex. I will make a clone of this and here I'll do something a little bit more complex so I'll kind of move this up here and just kind of extrude So apply Turbo Smooth here, just to give myself more geometry to work with. All right, and then I will simply collapse that, make sure it's editable, poly. All right, then let's say I go here and I inset and then bevel. Okay, so I've got this detail here. And I can apply Turbo Smooth once more. All right, now let's say that I want to sharpen this area up. So in the previous example, it was pretty simple, just inserting two loops through here, and it gave us a sharp result. And here I will do the same. I'll apply it a poly first, then go under Edge, and Ring, and connect two through here. And I will use Swift Loop to insert a loop through here and through here. Alright, so you notice that it sharpened the area up, but it also gave us... It also sharpened this area here. Because, of course, whenever you have multiple edges together, it creates a sharp effect. So you notice that it kind of ruined the smoothness of the rest of the model right here. So you definitely, definitely notice up here a little bit and down here and of course it becomes more drastic when you get more and more complex and start dealing with more intricate geometry. Of course there are a number of ways of removing this for example I can select this and then apply swift loop and that kind of helps to fix the problem you can see it's no longer creating that sharpness. However when you're dealing with something complex it's a lot of work to balance out all the loops. And this is just a very simple example. If you have something a little more complex, you have to spend a lot of time fixing the loops. What Open Subdiv gives us is the ability to not really worry about loops and not have to put them in the first place. So then I'll select all of this and remove it. And this time, instead of using Turbo Smooth, I will activate the Open Subdiv modifier, Open Subdiv MPS. I will turn off Iceland Display and I will 
apply two subdivision levels. So let's say three. So here we go. Now you notice right now it's behaving the same way as Turbo Smooth. In fact, if I copy this over here and delete Open Subdiv and apply Turbo Smooth instead and apply three iterations, you can see it's pretty much giving us the same result. So how do we really use this? So what I need to do is here under Edge Crease, I can activate this and you notice it changes. So I can use Crease for both vertices and edges. In this case I'll select Edge Crease, so to put a check mark right here. Now I'll go back to Edit, edit Poly and collapse this. And Edit Poly, if I switch to Edges, it has an area here you can input weights and creases. Now we'll just be using weights, we won't be using the crease values. So if I switch to Vertex, you can see how I have an intern area here for vertices and for edges. So first thing I'll do is simply select all the vertices and just make it the weight zero. Then I'll select all the edges and I will select them all and make the weight zero. Simply right click here to make it zero. All right, so now that all the edges have a weight of zero, I can now control how sharp an edge is by selecting it and increasing the value here. So what I can do is select all of these edges here and deselect the ones that I don't want to be sharp. And let's say I want to deselect these right here. All right. Now I will activate and show in result and turn off the cage. And notice as I increase the weight now, it becomes sharper. So this is zero. This is one, two, three. Now if I enter in four, you notice nothing really happens. One thing to understand about weights here is that they have a lot to do with the subdivision level. So if the level is three, if I enter in three here for these edges, it will have the maximum sharpness. So notice that now it's pretty much perfectly sharp here. If I decrease it, so somewhere about 2.4, you notice that it's not sharp. Three, perfectly sharp. Four, does nothing. However, if I increase the subdivision level to four, now you notice that the three value here is no longer creating a perfectly sharp result. Now if we want it to be perfectly sharp, we need, to in, we need to enter in 4 here. And once again, it's perfectly sharp. So whatever number you have set here for subdivision levels, if you enter in a value of 4, if you enter in that number here in weight, that would be the maximum sharpness. However, I recommend not using the maximum sharpness. At least have a little bit lower because usually nothing is ever perfectly sharp. There's always a little bit of a chamfer there. All right, and next, let's say that if you want this to have a little bit of roundness here, you can keep these settings. But what you can also do is, let's say, select these edges, and then increase the weight for them as well to get hard surface here. Now you notice that when I increase the weight I get this effect because what's happening here is that this whole area here is being smooth but we do have a sharpness here. So what you may want to do is kind of rethink the way you think about topology and that is before you would have to for example inset now you can simply not inset and simply have the topology be like this. So I can simply weld like here and then remove these edges. And as you can see this no longer gives me those strange results. So just kind of 
have this kind of topology it's a lot simpler so now I can pretty much have whatever small detail I want without having to worry too much about where the edge loops go so let me create some more details here I'll turn on snaps make sure that vertex snap is on and let's say snap right here and then I will select these edges and apply extrude and then just kind of fix up the topology a little bit you know, weld right here, weld right here Alright, and here's what I have so far. Now what I recommend is actually not worrying about the weights until you finish modeling because as you model here and perform various operations the weights will be all over the place. So I recommend saving the setting the weights until you've already finished all your modeling. And I'll set this to zero. And I'll select the ones that I actually want to sharpen up right here. Select these and loop. And then I can simply increase the weight until I get the desired amount of sharpness here. And there we are. And let's say I also want some sharpness right here. So I'll select these edges and these edges and increase the weight for them. And there we are. And as you can see, we get very nice smooth results.